Hello students, welcome to today's class. Students, in previous class we had discussed about uh, the action of sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide on salt solution. Students, today uh, we are going to discuss the action of ammonium hydroxide on salt solutions and on the basis of uh, the action of ammonium hydroxide on salt solution, uh, we can identify as to which cation or which basic radical is present in the salt. So students, what uh, is karna kya hai? We add ammonium hydroxide to the salt solution in small quantity first and then we see or we note the color of the precipitate. From the color of the precipitate and its further solubility in excess of the ammonium hydroxide, we can identify as to which basic radical is present in the given salt solution or in, in the given salt. So students, first we are going to discuss action of ammonium hydroxide on calcium salt. So students, I have first calcium salt. So calcium, two positive salts. Now students, say I have calcium uh, nitrate. Now we know that all nitrates are water soluble. So calcium nitrate dissolves in water to give a colorless solution. Now students, we add to it ammonium hydroxide and we observe that there is no precipitation. So students, this is very, very important because when sodium hydroxide was added to calcium salt, there was a white precipitate. But when we add ammonium hydroxide to the calcium nitrate, there is no precipitation. So that means a calcium salt can be easily identified by adding NaOH or ammonium hydroxide. Means we can distinguish calcium salts from other salts with the help of this reagent. Now the question arises why ammonium hydroxide does not cause any precipitation. So students let me tell you ammonium hydroxide we know is what a weak base and being weak it undergoes ionization or dissociation to a very small extent. So that means the concentration of hydroxyl ions in the solution is very very low and it is so low that it cannot cause precipitation of calcium ions as calcium hydroxide. So student this is very very important point to note that there will be no precipitation of calcium salt with ammonium hydroxide because ammonium hydroxide is weak base and the concentration of hydroxyl ion is too low, low to cause precipitation of calcium nitrate. So students this was very important. Uh, identify Suppose uh, if I provide you two reagents uh, in two test tubes, though there is no label on the test tube say, and one of the test tubes say contains sodium hydroxide, the other contains ammonium hydroxide. How will you distinguish sodium hydroxide, ammonium hydroxide? Students, we will take some calcium salt. And when we add sodium hydroxide or we add a solution to calcium salt, if there is a precipitation, that means that a test tube contains sodium hydroxide and if there is no precipitation, it means the other test tube has ammonium hydroxide. So this can be used to distinguish alkali sodium hydroxide and ammonium hydroxide also. Now students, we will discuss the precipitation of say ferrous salts. Now, say if I take ferrous sulfate, now students, this ferrous sulfate aqueous solution is pale green. Now when we add ammonium hydroxide to it in small quantity, initially there will be a precipitation. So we get this ferrous hydroxide a dirty green precipitate or we simply write green precipitate. So there will be precipitation. We get dirty green precipitate and then there is ammonium sulfate in the solution. Now students, this dirty green precipitate remains insoluble in excess ammonium hydroxide. That means when we add ammonium hydroxide in excess, this precipitate will not dissolve. So students, 
we use this test to identify ferrous ions in a salt how suppose mujhe ek salt mila hai now the salt solution is prepared then we add ammonium hydroxide if we get a dirty green precipitate which remains insoluble in excess ammonium hydroxide it means the salt contains ferrous ions now students next salt we are taking is ferric salt so that means salts containing iron 3 positive ions now students i have suppose ferric chloride students ferric chloride dissolves in water to give a yellow solution now when we add ammonium hydroxide to this solution in small quantity first there will be a reddish brown precipitate due to the formation of ferric hydroxide so we have a reddish brown precipitate and students this reddish brown precipitate remains insoluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide so that means uske baad bhi agar main ammonium hydroxide excess mein dal dun this precipitate will not dissolve in it and then we have students ammonium chloride which is water soluble so will remain in the solution so again students if a salt solution gives a reddish brown precipitate which remains insoluble in excess ammonium hydroxide it means the given salt contains ferric ion now students the next salt we are going to discuss is copper two positive salt now students i have suppose copper sulfate now copper sulfate aqueous solution is light blue in color now students when we add ammonium hydroxide to this in small quantity the copper ions they get precipitated as copper hydroxide so we get this precipitate students this will be a blue precipitate so you will get a blue precipitate along with that we have say ammonium sulfate in the solution now students when excess of same reagent is added the blue precipitate dissolves so in this case this blue precipitate dissolves in excess of ammonium hydroxide so students now the question arises why this blue precipitate dissolves in excess ammonium hydroxide so students answer to this query is that when we add excess of ammonium hydroxide to the above solution a water soluble complex salt is formed due to which this blue precipitate disappears so for that the chemical equation is that we have calcium hydroxide now this is a solid precipitate then we have say ammonium sulfate in the solution now students ab isme hi agar main excess mein aur alkali dal dun that means we add ammonium hydroxide in say excess now what happens students we get a complex salt which is water soluble so we get this salt this is tetra amine so name of this complex salt is tetra amine copper two sulfate two is for the valency of copper that is oxidation state and then we have sulfate plus students we have uh four water molecules so this is very very important observation so that means if we are uh, say provided a light blue or we are provided a salt which gives what a blue precipitate upon adding ammonium hydroxide and then we add excess of ammonium hydroxide and this if this blue precipitate dissolves it means the salt contains copper ion and students the important thing is that initially formed precipitate was blue in color and when we had excess of alkali we get a water soluble salt and this water soluble complex salt has deep blue coloration so that means the solution becomes inky blue or deep blue so this is very very important to note that if any salt initially gives say a blue precipitate which dissolves in excess of alkali to give a inky blue solution the salt contains copper ion so students now we are going to discuss action of ammonium hydroxide on zinc salt now students zinc salts also give 
precipitation with ammonium hydroxide and we get a white gelatinous precipitate suppose i have zinc say chloride now this is a colorless solution to this solution we add ammonium hydroxide now in small amount first hoga kya the zinc ions they get precipitated so since hydroxide of zinc is insoluble we get a white gelatinous precipitate we get white gelatinous precipitate along with that we have ammonium chloride in the solution and students this white gelatinous precipitate dissolves in excess alkali that is ammonium hydroxide due to the formation of a water soluble complex salt so again we have say zinc hydroxide precipitate but when we add excess of alkali so or thoda ammonium hydroxide dalenge the initially formed precipitate disappears why students it is due to the formation of a water soluble complex salt so this is the salt and then we have water and this solution will be colorless and this salt is tetra amine zinc to chloride so since zinc salts are white this will be a colorless solution so students if on adding ammonium hydroxide to a salt we get a white gelatinous precipitate which dissolves in excess of alkali it means the salt contains zinc ion now students last we we are going to discuss action of ammonium hydroxide on lead salt now students the only salt of lead which is water soluble is lead nitrate so we take lead nitrate so this lead nitrate solution is colorless we add to it ammonium hydroxide in small quantity first the lead ions they get precipitated as lead hydroxide so we get pboh twice and being insoluble it forms a chalky white precipitate so we have a chalky white precipitate and then we have say ammonium nitrate which is water soluble so it will be in the solution now students this lead hydroxide precipitate will remain insoluble in or excess ammonium hydroxide so this will not further dissolve so again we conclude that if a salt on adding ammonium hydroxide gives a chalky white precipitate which remains insoluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide then the salt contains lead to positive ion so student this was our discussion uh, so with the help of these sodium hydroxide and ammonium hydroxide or koh also we can distinguish different pairs of salt solutions how the two important things are pehla we notice the color of the precipitate which is formed upon initial addition of the alkali and then we see whether the precipitate will dissolve in excess of alkali or not so un sab inference se hum ye predict kar sakte hain as to which cation is present in the salt now students we are going to discuss action of sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide on certain metals and their oxides and hydroxides dear students we have learned in previous chapter that metals react with acids dilute acids especially to form salts and liberate hydrogen but students there are some metals like aluminium zinc lead etc which not only react with acids but they also react with hot and concentrated alkalis sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide to form a water soluble salt and hydrogen is also liberated so now we are going to study the action of hot and concentrated alkalis strong alkalis on these metals uh since these metals react with acids as well as bases we say these are amphoteric metals that means these show acidic as well as the basic character so first student we are going to discuss aluminum so hot and concentrated nh react with 
एल्यूमिनियम giving a water soluble salt which is called sodium meta aluminate so and there will be liberation of hydrogen gas students zinc also reacts with hot and concentrated NaOH so that means why heating is also done and we get sodium zincate now this is a complex salt sodium zincate and hydrogen is liberated now students lead also react similarly forming sodium plumbite so we get sodium plumbite pb o2 and hydrogen gases liberated so this is the action of hot and concentrated alkali on these metals now students let me tell you that पोटासियम हाइड्रोक्साइड विल रिएक्ट सिमिलरली मींस आपने जस्ट यहां मेटल चेंज कर देना तो सोडियम की जगह पोटासियम लगा दोगे देन द रिएक्शन विल टेक प्लेस सिमिलरली द ओनली डिफरेंस विल बी इन दीस सॉल्ट्स आल्सो वी विल हैव व्हाट पोटासियम इन द प्लेस ऑफ सोडियम सो पोटासियम हाइड्रोक्साइड रिएक्ट्स सिमिलरली दैट मींस आप सिमिलर ऑब्जर्वेशंस ही ड्रॉ करोगे नाउ स्टूडेंट्स वी विल डिस्कस द एक्शन ऑफ alkali NaOH or KOH on oxides and hydroxides of these metals because oxides and hydroxides of these metals are also amphoteric that means they show acidic as well as basic character so students let me illustrate this with the help of example zinc oxide now students zinc oxide is amphoteric which means it reacts with acids as well as bases so first we are discussing reaction with acid hcl hydrochloric acid so students neutralization occurs and we get salt and water but students zinc oxide is amphoteric which means it reacts with base also forming salt which is sodium zincate and then we get water so this reaction shows what this reaction shows that since ye to well known acid hai so it means here zinc oxide acts as base now students see in this reaction nh is a well known base so obviously agar neutralization ho raha hai to here zinc oxide is acting as what acid so now you see zinc oxide in this reaction acts as acid whereas in this reaction it acts as a base so zinc oxide shows both the characters and therefore we say zinc oxide is an amphoteric oxide students similarly lead oxide is also amphoteric so it reacts with acid as well as base so here uh, in present section we are actually discussing action of alkalis so this part is not that important for us because this we have discussed in the previous units that is acid base and salts so our main attention is to what study this reaction that is action of alkali on amphoteric oxide so here we have lead oxide reacts similarly forming what sodium plumbite now then aluminium oxide which is also called alumina reacts with NaOH forming sodium meta aluminate that is NaAlO2 So students, oxides of zinc, lead, and aluminium they are amphoteric, which means they react with acids as well as bases. Now students, similarly, we say that their hydroxides are also amphoteric. So ये भी amphoteric है, which means ये acid के साथ भी react करेगा, ठीक है? So lead hydroxide is also amphoteric, ये भी acid के साथ react करेगा. And even aluminium hydroxide is also amphoteric, ये भी acid के साथ react करेगा, but then ये base के साथ भी react करेगा, so but since हम NaOH और KOH का reaction study कर रहे हैं, so we will discuss this part only. So zinc hydroxide being amphoteric reacts with acid as well as base, and with base NaOH, so it reacts to form a complex salt which is called sodium zincate, 
and we can write it this in uh, in this fashion also that is Na2ZnOH4 students zincate ko aise likhe ya aise likhe baat ek hi hai similarly students lead hydroxide will also react with NaOH forming sodium plumbite which can also be written in because ye complex salt hai so unko aise hi likha jata hai now students we have aluminium hydroxide reacts with NaOH to give sodium metaluminate which can also be written as NaAlOH4 so students this was very very important topic now students uh, this was our last topic of this unit unit 4 but let me tell you that this unit is very very important because yahan se aapko generally icse class 10 mein four marks ka question aata hai aur wo bonus hai because it is very easy to identify the salts or the metal ions present in the salt by the action of these reagents by the action of these reagents that is naoh koh or ammonium hydroxide now one more important uh, thing uh, is that we have discussed reaction with naoh only but the reaction with koh occurs similarly so students in next video lecture we'll discuss some uh, questions based on these topics and then i'll tell you how to identify the metal ions by the action of these reagents so students that is all for today thank you